Yes. <coughs> this is our 11th week of our summer-long deep dive into IMDb's list of the 100 worst movies of all time. And wow, this is the next to last episode of our of our season long summer of bottoming. And wow, this has been difficult. I never I, I thought this would be a lot more fun. You know? Yes. Watching a bunch of bad movies, but uh instead it's just been an uphill climb into the center of beautiful scenic shit. It has not been fun. It has, it has not, not been, been fun. fun. If I ever, if I ever see Madonna in person, I'm just kidding. Spa in the nuts. Yeah. So anyway, at the top but, of to, but to be honest, at the top of the show, Madonna, I was likely to do that anyway. Yeah, that's a good point. That is a good point. Who, at the top of the show. Discuss uh, one of the large number of movies in IMDb's bottom 100 that we won't be doing because there's not a hundred weeks in a summer, but there are 104 days of summer vacation and school comes along just to end it. Anyway, this week we are going to be discussing the 1985 sequel, Teen Wolf 2, starring Jason Bateman. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah. Michael J. Fox wanted to be in Back to the Future, but there was a scheduling conflict. And so as Steven Spielberg started filming Back to the Future with their star, Eric Stoltz, Michael J. Fox was also on the Universal lot about to finish filming Teen Wolf. And Michael J. Fox was once quoted as saying, look at that. Spielberg is here making art, and I'm here making a fucking werewolf movie. <laughs> so, Michael J. Fox, not a fan of the Teen Wolf movies, but to be fair, where he was doing werewolf shit, it took like four to six hours to put on all of the werewolf outfits. You know, because back in the day, it took so long with, like, the spirit gum and all of that shit and to put all the, the fucking... Now you'd just yeah. all do that with CGI, but back in the day, you'd just be piling on all the crap in your face. And he just absolutely... Oh, Fox finishes his werewolf movie as back starts filming, continues filming. And we all know what happened next with Back to the Future... But the gist is, the creators of the low-budget teen werewolf movie said, okay, we finished this movie, and Jesus, this movie is lame. This movie is dumb. Plus, Michael J. Fox isn't a big enough star to get people to come to the theater to watch this turd burger we made. So you know what? We're just going to shelve Teen Wolf. I don't know if we're ever going to release this movie, because no one is going to ever want to come and see Michael J. Fox in a werewolf movie. So they shelve Teen Wolf, and then they fire Eric Stoltz as the star of Back to the Future, and they hire Michael J. Fox. Back to the Future comes out. It's a big hit, and the Teen Wolf people go, wait, Michael J. Fox is a huge star now? Quick, let's release our shitty Michael J. Fox movie. So Back to the Future came out in July of 1985, and Teen Wolf was quickly rushed out the next month, August of 1985. Teen Wolf cost $1.2 million to make and ended up making $80 million solely by piggybacking on the success of Back to the Future. If Back to the Future hadn't have come out, who knows if we ever would have seen the movie Teen Wolf, and yeah. who knows if it ever did see the life the light of day if it even was a success but teen wolf made such money that the filmmakers said quick let's rush another shitty teen wolf movie but michael j fox said hell no not on your freaking life so the filmmakers needed another young cheap tv sitcom star so they went with jason bateman and 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 Makes to sense. be clear this is yeah it does make sense but to be clear, this is a rushed sequel to an already not that good film. 
the only people to return from the first film were the dad and the fat guy who also played Francis in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. The only two people okay. that returned from the first. It's like Delta House all yes. over again. Who returned? Who returned the adult in charge and the fat one? It's just like it's just like Delta House. So Teen Wolf 2 is basically the exact same movie, except in this film, Michael J. Fox's cousin Todd goes to college, and it's the exact same thing, except in this film, instead of basketball, apparently he's going to college on a boxing scholarship? Is that even a fucking thing? I, I, I don't know, but I think that they missed the golden opportunity not making it badminton. Ooh, yeah, it could have been badminton or collegiate bowling. I know that's a thing. Yes. I've never heard of collegiate boxing before. You know, I've never seen a college boxing team. This is all very confusing to me. Anyway, the movie is shit. Uh, fun fact, they were all set to do a third Teen Wolf movie, which would have starred Alyssa Milano as a girl... Uh, trying out for a football team. But Teen Wolf <coughs> 2 cost $3 million to make, and it only made $7 million in the box office, so Teen Wolf 3 was canceled. Teen Wolf 2 is number 90 on the IMDb Bottom 100, right in front of Turkey Zone, Reset, Eva Deek 5. Really? And with all of the talk we've done about Reset, yeah, with all of the talk we have done about Recep Evadi this summer on the podcast, I really hope that one day I'm able to find a dub or a sub of a Recep Evadi movie and be able to watch it on the podcast, because Lord knows who are clamoring to hear a podcast talk about Recep Evadi. That is what we have learned. A lot of people uh, tuning in to this podcast podcast to hear Recep Evadik discussions. This is correct. I feel like I'm lagging like five or ten seconds ahead of you, Bonnie. Like, you... I'll say something and then like this. Yes. See? See? That was crazy. That was crazy. But anyway, uh, yeah, uh, next week is our last week of the summer of bottoming. And thank fucking God. I can't imagine how bad next week's movie is going to be if this week was only number two. So, yeah. you know, I'm just praying that we and, get through this summer in one piece. And it was, a, it was a rough one. It was a rough one. Jesus Christ. But I figured out something shocking about really one person, there is one person who has appeared in multiple movies on this list and I 100% figured out why and it is a shocking twist I figured out a, an exclusive about someone in this week's movie it's going to blow your mind good cuz frankly it's going to blow your mind it's going to tie the whole summer together i i was kind of wondering about it and I was trying well, I to figure out the connection with this particular person. I figured something out, and I'm really proud that I'm, I'm blowing the lid off this. But that's later. That's in Act 3. We're still in Act 1. So next week, we are going to be in, in, the, in Act 1. We're going to be taking a look at all 12 movies we've done this week. And we're going to give them little reviews. You know, like I'll mention a movie we did going to be talking about the changes in numbers because the IMDb bottom 100 is an ever-changing thing and one of the movies that we saw this summer isn't on the list anymore really yeah and that's going to be that's that's going to be some shocking news so yeah because the the list is ever changing i uh there's a youtube channel i think it's called i hate everything and they did, a, like, three years ago, they, they did the search for the worst. 
and they tried the movie on the IMDb 100. And yeah, I noticed there's a bunch of movies that that guy did on YouTube that just aren't on the list anymore. So it's an ever changing thing. So some new Bruce Willis movie went into the IMDb bottom 100, so we gotta take something out. And so we're gonna be discussing that. We're gonna be discussing the movies that we've done, a look back at our very painful summer. So join us next week for the shocking conclusion to our <coughs> summer of bottoming. Can't wait. And cut on that segment. <laughs>